Hello and welcome back to Kerbal Swiss Ram Plane Reviews. First of all, I'd like to apologize for the sporadic and not many videos and kind of all over the place and not doing this series for a little while. Today's episode I'm titling Grab Bag because I made a little randomizer which is far from perfect, but I made a little randomizer and grabbed some random crafts. So today we are starting with the XB-1058 by Rix the Man, which is a fighter bomber jet, primarily a bomber, similar in roles to the F-117 apparently. It is for 1.2, it has flaps and engine modes. Engine modes? Oh, he set two keys for engine modes instead of one. That's interesting. D wait, is this going to work how I think it's going to work? Because if it is, that's going to be kind of silly. I do like that it is slightly down-tilted. To start with. I do actually like that. Also, did I say it was made in 1.2? Because I just noticed it's actually made in 1.1.3, but because he labeled it as the newest version, I put 1.2. And actually this is 1.2.1, so that's not even accurate. And uh, let's get her off the ground. Okay, very easy. Very good start. Now, one Flaps, two flaps. Yeah, he set two separate keys. You know you can just toggle these, right? You don't need a, a key for deploy and a key for retract. I'm guessing it's the same thing. Nope, this is toggle. And this is toggle. You have three and four both set to toggle the same engines. It's kind of a waste. But, in any case, here we are flying. It does fly very fast. I like that. Ooh, very easy to spin out of control. Very... A little bit difficult to stop spinning. Are all of these set for... No, those are not set for anything, and then these are set for everything. I'm guessing these are also set for everything. And uh, these, of course, are disabled because they're part of the fuselage. I actually think this would perform well with BD Armory. Yeah. It's not the best performance, but the uh, one of the things that helps with BD Armory is actually maintaining speed, and a lot of crafts that are very maneuverable are not good at maintaining speed in a turn and this thing maintains its speed quite well it, it does steadily lose speed but it doesn't lose speed as fast as other designs and it looks like it will maintain quite a high speed at least with the afterburners on quite easily so yeah I'd, I'd like to see this in BD Armory um, I remember a long time ago I started this thing where I was gonna try to do uh, various competitions against uh, different designs and then I uh, made one episode and oh god that is the downside to uh, not being able to pull up so quickly <laughs> I made one episode and then I never did it again um, you know that was before they introduced competition mode in BD Armory I think I should do it again with competition mode and multiples of crafts that would be fun but yeah not not much to say about it I think it would perform well in that uh, that's about all Next up is the A- Oh, I recognize this! This is an AMX A1, which is similar, similar to a design I made back when I was making the, uh, uh, minimal, minimal planes, except I made an AMX, uh, crap, I don't remember what it was, but it was similar, and it was like a improved version of this, but, uh, the AMX- oh, oh, never mind, this is the same thing, apparently. The AMX International, also known as the AMX A1, question mark? Oh, it has, oh, because I just, oh, it has flaps and slats. And uh, toggle the engine and switch mode. Oh, because it's got a panther on it. Nice. It's a ground attack aircraft for battlefield interdiction, close air support, and reconnaissance missions. It was built until 1999 by AMX International, an Italian Brazilian. Is it Italian and Brazilian? Man, I forgot that. It was uh, designed, is designated A1 by the Brazilian Air Force and A11 Gib Ghibli by the Italian Air Force. Huh. And uh, this is his version of the... <laughs> I like how he says, this is my version of the Italian jet, AMX A1, which is the designation that the Brazilian Air Force uses. So, uh, and he means it has a, he says it has a really unique maneuverability. Do like a backflip and regain control instantly. It has insane maneuverability and very unique maneuverability. And let's see, that's flaps, that's slats. Okay, that doesn't actually work the way you think it does. I just want to tell you, um, the way KSP works, those slats will actually make it more difficult to take off. And I'll demonstrate that by turning on, which button is it? That button, aerodynamic forces. And, um, okay, it was flaps and slats, and three toggles the engine. 
Oh, there's two engines in there. Is it two Panthers clipped together? Yes, it is. And uh, three toggles the engine, four switches mode. So you're going to go ahead and afterburner, engage SAS, full throttle, and pull up right away. Yeah, and see how we're barely getting any kind of lift off of those? It's because they're basically level the way we're flying right now. But if I disengage them, we'll start gaining lift from them. So it's actually better to not have them on, or if anything, to deploy them the wrong way. And I know this makes no sense for real life. Oops, I toggled the engines. It makes no sense for real life aerodynamics, but in KSP, that actually increases your lift. So, yeah. That's something to consider, unless this was meant to be played with FAR, but it doesn't say to use FAR. Also, I just noticed I did not disengage the landing gear, and I also did that thing that he said about a backflip and then regaining control, like, instantly. So, uh, oh good, we can see from in here. I was afraid we wouldn't be able to because of all the stuff. I like that it's got the refueling arm, and uh, you made a cockpit out of the uh, solar panels, even though, obviously, it doesn't work very well, and they're all clipped together and stuff, but uh, fun nonetheless. Yeah, super maneuverability to ridiculous degree. Losing all our airspeed doing this, of course. We're falling out of the sky. Come on. Wow. Yeah, this thing's heavy. That's the biggest problem with it. It's too heavy, and the game just crashed. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, so like I was saying, the, uh, the engine... The, despite having two engines, it's far too heavy to really hold itself up very well. Even though it's got a lot of the fuel removed, it's just a bit too heavy to really keep up with those maneuverabilities capabilities. So maybe making it less maneuverable would be a good idea. Although, you don't really want to do that, do you? Next we have the Yakunov AMF-1 Eurocan Bomber. It's a very heavy bomber with a smaller payload, oddly. It's a very large plane, and it's quite fast, and it's apparently visually appealing. I, uh, I have to disagree with this bit here being visually appealing, and, uh, and this bit a little bit, but not as much. But uh, the back of it definitely looks good. It has a good ass, except for this clippiness. And, um, yeah, BD Armory. BD Armory was updated for... 1.2 and 1.2.1 uh, and by that I mean that BD Armory Continued was updated for that because if you did not know BD Armory was pretty much, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It was pretty much uh, abandoned because Bahamuto, believe it or not, has a life and so, you know, he had to uh, go live his life and uh, that means not being able to uh, develop mods for a little while. And so the community, some members of the community took over, making sure that BD Armory will continue to work and have updates and new functionality. And this has no yaw capabilities. Okay. No, bad design, bad design just for that, because Jesus Christ, I should not have to be unable to keep myself from rolling off of the frickin' runway. Also, it'd be cooler if I could lift off a little earlier than that, but I'm not going to blame you too much for that. I would move the center of lift a bit farther forward, especially since, uh, yeah, this thing's having to maintain a pretty good amount of pitch just to stay level. And I, I know we're climbing, but I mean, to stay relatively level, it, it's using a lot of pitch. Maybe things will be better once we drop the Baydam, the Jdams, and we know how we, yeah, we have no weapon manager, so I can't. That might be a bug, because uh, it was just recently updated. Mm, I don't see a weapon manager anywhere. I don't think we actually... I don't think we have one. So you have... Okay, JDAMs are precision-guided weapons that are guided by GPS, and you have them as just freefall bombs, because we have no weapon manager. Why? Why are you using JDAMs if we're just going to drop them like freefall bombs? Also, um, not having weapon manager means you can't use Ripple, and uh, Ripple Fire makes your explosives much cooler and more interesting, as well as more effective than uh, dropping them all in one cluster. Can we detonate already, please? I want to watch him detonate. 
Oh, that was, um, rather wimpy. And you might have heard my phone go off once or twice. Sorry. So yeah, not good pitch, no yaw capability, uh, no weapon manager. I mean, you do have, you do have this. So I guess, uh, oops, that's not what I meant to do. No, you can send things to the GPS, but without a weapon manager, it doesn't really matter because you can't, you can't access the GPS. So, I don't know what you were thinking. And finally for today, we have the Rascal 1.2, which I'm guessing was named 1.2 because it's for version 1.2. And it is apparently very fast, fun, and turns very tight. And I would imagine it would be true because looking at it, it is a very lightweight design, lots of control surfaces, and uh, it definitely looks like it's ready for super maneuverability. I do love the very wide body design and that it's it's made of wing. <laughs> it's cool. Also, I just realized I completely forgot to give credit to the creators for these various designs. Fortunately, at the links in the description to the crafts, it does say their names. The AMX A1 was by Pioxi? I'm not sure if that's how you say that. The last one was by Club of Squirrel, and this one is by a Calm Llama. And, uh, ooh. Interesting. Oh god. Ah! New. No. Okay, the roll, the roll is a bit overdone in that it's it can be it's hard to um, hard to restore yourself after rolling really hard. I would reduce the number of control surfaces that are active on the roll direction um, to maybe just these two, because uh, the roll performance is so incredibly good that I over roll very easily and very nearly crash twice before actually crashing. Basically, like I said, the performance on the roll is just too good. In fact, I'm going to try disabling roll. Do those go in pairs? Good, they do. Disabling roll on these and see if that helps. Yeah, see? Yeah, that. I like the way that roll is performing much better. Very nice. And, uh, oh dear, I did that to myself, though. That's my own fault. That's entirely my own fault. So this is apparently an updated version of The Rascal. It can fly in ways that other planes just can't. Like the Rascal, it was built to be unstable, but it's a little more stable than the original. Ooh, I thought I was going to hit my uh, engines there. It has a little better low speed handling and better spin recovery. He made it stronger, he just made an 86G turn in a test flight, and it can also land without wings apparently. Well, when your main body is a wing, you don't really need wings, so I wouldn't be surprised at all. Also. The fact that he made an 86G turn with it makes me want to... Oh yes, this is a new install. It makes me want to do the same kind of ridiculous shit. So, here we are going extremely fast. Uh, not fast enough. Let's go out a bit further. How are we doing on speed? Pretty ridiculous. Oh, it did, it did its own little high G maneuver there for a moment. Alright. Going very fast. Okay. Um, cannot take however many G's that was. How many G's was that? 56.1. And you said you did 86 G's. Liar. Nah. Um, you know, just because it took an 86 G turn once doesn't mean that it can do it again. <laughs> got lucky. Or I got unlucky. One of the two. I do like the fact that I am successfully flying a cockpit, though. So I'm going to see if I can land a cockpit. Because it does have reaction wheels. And how much battery power do we have? Not a lot, but enough. Alright. I'm going to try to land it, but if I can't land it, at the last second, I will jump out. Because the water is dangerous. Alright, let's get ourselves a little more speed. Now let's pull it up. Pull up. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Pull up, gain more lift, gain more lift, gain more lift! Fuck it! Oh, we both survived. Well, in any case, that's all for this time. Thanks for watching, and as always, I will see you in space.